right guys, so on today's vlog, what we're gonna focus on is creating a face frame. Now, a lot of you guys have submitted questions asking about how do you create a face frame without creating a lot of layering. So one question was on Instagram. This is from Beauty by Ashley Perosi. She says, can you please do a face frame on really long hair? Something easy. Sometimes I feel like I get too many layers and I hate how it looks, uh, especially when they have a part. There is so much going on on one side and not much going on on the other. Uh, I need help. Here we go, Ashley. So today I put together the vlog. This is gonna show you how to create a face frame, keep a balanced look. Balanced look does not mean that each side is the same length. It means that you're working with two different densities. One side's heavier than the other side, so you have to cut both sides different. That's what we're gonna focus on today. This is our end result. Kinda hard to see, it's windy outside, but you'll see it at the end of the video. Quick video, easy technique. Definitely salon friendly. I think you guys will like it. Post in the comments below. Let me know what you think, what you want to see next in future vlogs. And also, uh, yeah, hit the like button. All right, guys, here we go. Let's get started. All right, guys, so we're going to start off by parting the mannequin uh, where they part their hair. So this is the left-hand side parting. And then I'm going to draw a line two inches from the hairline down to behind the ear. Uh, it's a diagonal back line, so I'm really following the head shape, which is great because that's what a face frame does. It follows the head shape as well. So we're going to start off um, with nice medium elevation. The more you elevate a face frame, um, the lighter it's going to be. So I think a lot of people um, cut the face frame super low down below the chin. And what happens is you get too much of a buildup of weight. I think a lot of people treat the front of the hair differently than they do the back of the hair, but they don't realize that if you elevate the back of the hair, it's, it's lighter, it has more layers. It's the same thing with the front of the hair. So the more you lift it up, the more you elevate the hair, the um, lighter it's gonna be, the less density is gonna be there, the more you're gonna layer it. So you just wanna make sure when you're working a face frame, a lot of clients complain about the fact that they're it's too heavy, um, it's lifeless, it doesn't really work. So going in, uh, using that medium elevation is a nice starting point. Um, if they have a higher density, definitely raise up your hand a little bit and then work that finger angle um, to create the angle that you're looking for. Over direction works as well, but it, sometimes it layers it a little bit too much. So that's why I'm choosing to work with my finger angle this time. So now we're gonna work on the opposite side. Same diagonal back section, two inches in. I grab a bit uh, of hair for my guideline from the opposite side. And another thing I want you to notice here is that as I'm working on the left-hand side of the head, I have a whole different elevation. And the reason for that is this is the weaker side. So it's the less dense side. So if I were to hold it up the same exact way as I did the other side, um, it would fall too light. Um, I would remove too much weight and it wouldn't look balanced. So I'd say the key things for you to focus on when you're cutting a face frame to get it right every single time, look at the density, look where you're parting the hair, focus on your elevation, focus on your finger angle, and you should have a way more successful uh, face frame. So now we're gonna kick it in, uh, we're gonna style it so you guys can see the end result. I use the Bricado mousse that I use in a lot of different videos. Um, it's a nice light hold mousse, doesn't have a sticky feel to it. I'm gonna go through, I got my Ergo paddle brush, my Ergo blow dryer. Um, a lot of people have questions about the Ergo dryer because you can never hear it. It is loud, it is definitely a loud, powerful dryer, um, and it's a nice Nice, small compact design the thing I love about the ergo dryer is the fact that every single part on the dryer is replaceable so um, if you it can be the last blow dryer you ever buy um, it's super powerful like I said um, polishes the hair really nice but it is not a quiet dryer but I'm not um, that's not what I look for in a blow dryer so it's definitely one of my favorites uh, so we get it all uh, polished out now I'm just going to smooth the ends. This is the Vibra Straight Iron from Bercato um, that I use in all the videos as well. Um, nice ceramic plate to it. And I go through and I just polish the ends. The blow dry part is all about um, working the scalp to mid shaft. So I work that with the brush. I'm using the paddle brush because it has a nice tight tension to it. And then I go through and uh, just polish the ends with the iron, giving a nice slight bend um, to go with the head shape. And then that finishes off our style. So I'm gonna finish everything with the Bricado Maximum Hold Hairspray. Um, nice clean hold, gives it some shine, but you can see how that face frame just wraps right around. Nice soft feel to it, not super thick. You could see the balanced uh, weight. 
um, distribution from the different ways that we cut each side. So hope you guys like the look. Let me know below. All right, guys, so if you liked that video, hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your friends, and also, like always, if you made it to the end, let me know in the comments below, and go to our fsesocial.com community, and make sure you join. We're on there, we're talking, we're sharing our work. Thousands of hairdressers are on there daily, so it's a good way to connect and uh, share your stuff with other hairdressers, that's what it's all about. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks.